My lords, I bring you the warm felicitations of the president, President Muhammad Buhari, who would have been here in person, but for a state engagement today in South Africa, which is why I have the privilege this morning of reading uh, his address. And I will read his address. My Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, thank you for the kind invitation to attend the opening ceremony of this biennial conference. I note with deep gratitude that this is an honor that you have consistently extended to me since 2015. As a platform for collective reflection, this conference is coming at a time that is crucial in various ways. A time when our country, along with the rest of the world, is dealing with the massive socioeconomic challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. As my lords may recall, in my 2019 address to this gathering, I stressed the need for implementation of measures that will ensure speedy dispensation of justice in the country through the dual track of removing administrative bottlenecks in the judicial process and adopting modern time-saving technology. Lessons learned during this difficult period of the pandemic have provided measures for achieving both goals. We have seen how the judiciary has risen to the challenge. Practice directions were issued by several courts for remote hearing of cases, electronic filing of court processes, service of hearing notices via email, and addresses and mobile telephone numbers of counsel and e-payment of filing fees with relevant devices installed. These innovative approaches have, in addition to ensuring compliance with the COVID-19 protocols, ensured that the wills of justice continue to move unhindered, in some cases even faster than what obtained during physical hearings. Speed, efficiency, and effectiveness were attained. It aided in the decongestion of cases, did away with the, with the obsolete method of physical filing, and ensured structured use of both judicial and administrative time and resources. Travel time to and from the courts for litigants, counsel, and witnesses was no longer an issue, effectively minimizing the need for adjournments. I believe that universal application of these approaches across the country will greatly enhance access to and speedy dispensation of justice. As my lords are aware, delay in the dispensation of justice, coupled with the increase in the number of cases in our courts, have remained subjects of grave concern. As someone said, our problem is not access to justice, it is exiting the justice system. And I know that delays are not necessarily the fault of judges. Lawyers are often also responsible. Should we not then, as has been suggested by some, be evolving a cost award system that recognizes the court as a finite an expensive public resource, and as such, delays and other dilatory tactics are visited with deterrent costs. We are part of the global marketplace for investments and legal services. The extent to which we can attract business to our country depends in part upon investor perception of the quality of our justice delivery system. If we are seen as inefficient and ineffective, we would lose out to more efficient systems. The other point that I think must be made is that of judicial integrity. There is, in my humble view, nothing as important than for judges to be trusted for honesty and integrity. Men and women who have the power over lives and livelihoods of others are not like the rest of us. We must place them on the highest scale of probity. I'd like to urge that your lordships must not allow a few to undermine the respect and trust 
both local and international, that our judiciary has built up in over a century of its existence. I'm not unaware of the number of challenges slowing the pace of transformation in our administration of justice system. More needs to be done to strike a sound balance between a high level of productivity, the quality of judicial decisions, and a careful consideration of cases. My administration, through the Federal Ministry of Justice, in collaboration with the National Judicial Council, has been working towards the resolution of these challenges. Some of the measures being taken include, one, the development of strategic infrastructure that will provide ease in case management, including electronic recording of proceedings to replace the tedious longhand recording currently practiced in the majority of our courts. Advancement in courtroom technology has increased the level of efficiency in the justice system in the areas of speed of documentation, accuracy, security, and accessibility of records. Two, enhanced welfare of judicial officers, especially in the area of conditions of service, salaries, allowances, retirement benefits for judicial officers, provision of comprehensive medical insurance. And on this note, I wish to commend the National Judicial Council for the institution of the NJC Health Insurance Program, which provides comprehensive international insurance for all members of the federal judiciary, as well as comprehensive local co coverage within all states of the Federation. These and other measures, some in the works, are aimed at standardizing our courts, safeguarding the integrity of the judiciary, and attracting the best legal minds to the bench. The judiciary remains the last hope of the common man. It exercises powers that affect lives and liberties. A trusted, well-resourced, and well-functioning judiciary is therefore essential to the entrenchment of the rule of law. To, to maintain this revert position and retain greater public confidence by the citizens, the judiciary must be independent from all forms of interference and must maintain the highest levels of responsiveness, professional standards, and integrity. We will continue to partner with you in ensuring that the judiciary is financially independent and effectively and sustainably retains a preeminent position in the quality of jurists, manning our courts, and the jurisprudence that develops from their collective premier reasoning. My lords, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I cannot end this address without appreciating the proactive stance taken by the leadership of the judiciary. My lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, in tackling some of the recent issues that emerged, especially in the area of conflicting court orders by courts of coordinated jurisdiction. And my Lord's disposition in revolutionizing the process, selection, and appointment of judges. While wishing you successful deliberations, it is my singular honor and privilege to formally declare the 2021 Biennial All Nigeria Judges Conference open. So thank you all. I thank you all for your kind attention. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.